Antoinette with Enough Astrology Corner. This is your energetic reading for Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. It is Wednesday. So today, Venus aligning with Pisces means that I think we're really evaluating relationships. Now, relationships go on, they're, we're in relationship with everything. We're in relationship with money. We're in relationships with coworkers, meaning anybody that we spend a significant amount of time nurturing a relationship. Many of us know that at work we spend, you know, a good eight to 10 hours a day sometimes with our our work relationships. That's why they have like house, they have like work husbands and work wives or whatever. So we definitely have relationships that are outside the normal um, relationships, such as a spouse, even though Venus really honestly does rule our partnerships, marriage, commitment, it rules money as well, and the pleasure that we associate with um, things that are beautiful or things that fulfill those superficial values, um, things that just make us feel validated externally is another thing that I, I deeply associate with with Venus. Um, it also rules how we display affection. Um, so I think right now, one of the things that I notice is that many of us are really exploring the longevity and the commitment level that we have to the longevity to our relationships. I think what I'm noticing as well when I'm talking to people and I'm also, you know, just observing people um, because I understand kind of what's going on astrologically is that more importantly the relationships are, are reflecting the way that we feel about ourselves. I deeply believe that this has yes it does have to do with our external relationships and companionships and unions of all sorts but I believe what they're actually truly identifying is the reflection and how we see ourselves. So if many of you are caught in a state where you are not completely fulfilled in relationships, and I believe that there is a relationship with yourself, there's a deficiency in the relationship that you have with yourself that you need to be, that you need to really honestly isolate. The reason I say this is because when Chiron is in Pisces, and Pisces is the part, is the energy that it, it causes our silent suffering. It's where we unconsciously repress things. <clears throat> It's where our conscious mind meets um, our consciousness. It's the part that awakens in us um, as we go through this existence where wisdom is formed. And so I believe that for some of us, especially when we have the sun in Aries and it's going to be conjunct with Uranus in Aries, I believe what this has to say is how do we feel about ourselves? So the relationships, if we're if we're in, you know, normal, significant, healthy relationships, and I believe that we are really honestly having a healthy relationship with ourselves. We are caught in these dysfunctional relationships that don't seem to be serving any purpose. And I believe what we're really isolating is what do we need on an individual basis? This really honestly deeply goes down to the most immediate needs in your relationships because what you're trying to do is meet your ego's needs. Now, for some of us that are starving, absolutely starving in relationships, what we're really starving is in with relationship with ourselves. Chiron is really that planet that really exposes us to our wounds. So, so for some of us that have that, you know, because we have this mutable T-square going on, with Saturn and um, Mars is an immutable T-square as well. I think what this is, and this mutable T-square is associated with Jupiter, which is in Virgo, which is all about that healing, the mind, healing the body. But also we have Neptune and Pisces, and Neptune and Pisces is the realization. It's it's that it's that point that we merge illusion with um, reality. I believe for some of us, what we're really honestly figuring out is that the relationships that we truly deeply have with ourselves, either we're not honest with, we're not honest, or we're trying to suppress the emotions that we feel about ourselves. So what we're doing is externally looking for some sort of validation. Um, I deeply believe that. I believe for some of us, what we're really trying to do is we're really trying, if, we, if we're starving for affection, if we're starving for love, if we're starving, we're starving. And then we need, this is that, that realization that I keep talking about is the realization that 
there's something that we need from ourselves. If we're if we're deficient in any way in a relationship, we can't we will only get what we mirror about ourselves. So a really strong healthy person is going to attract a strong healthy person. You att- like attracts like, you know, magnets You know, I know that opposites attract, but do they really stay together? What's the longevity of an opposite? You know, do the opposites eventually tear you apart? In my experience, yes. I mean, very rarely do I see that the true opposites totally stay together. However, do I believe that they then provide us with opposition that helps? It's a strength building. It's a mental strength building. It builds the relationship with ourselves. We understand our boundaries. Yes, I believe all of that's very real. Having said all of that, um, it everybody is going to be going on their own journey. I do have it wrote down that um, how it's going to be affecting uh, your sun or your rising sign and your Venus sign. Is, I would check out my Venus sign as well. Um, I'm going to get right to that. Uh, thank you so much for watching in this astrology corner, and I'll be right back. Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. Now, for you, um, your ruler is still in this very expansive part of the chart. You're really considering all your boundaries. So, with Venus ruling pleasure and, and relationships, I think that in the past in relationships, you held on religiously to rigid beliefs. You are, you like, you like routine and you like to stand up for mindsets. I mean, you're a leader. So naturally when you form a belief or or a mindset, you really honestly fight it tooth and nail to get everybody on board with your mindset. I do believe, however, that in the past, this also suppressed many of your partners It did not allow them to flourish and to develop their own mindsets because you wanted them to conform to your mindset. I do believe that that's a toxic way to be in a relationship because truly if we are secure with the relationship that we have with ourselves, secure in our mindset, then we don't have to conform everybody to our belief system. We basically allow them to have their belief system. We may view them as wrong, but we're secure enough with ourselves where we don't have to conform people. So I I definitely believe that what you could learn from this the revelation what what could you know what the the realistic output that you know because we're in this this uh, mutable t-square at this time i believe what we really need to really isolate is the fact that we we took we took part in some of the dysfunction in our relationships and the realism of that is if we reflect back on the past I believe that we um, we attempted to hold on to our partners, Aries, attempted to hold on to our partners through control. I believe that control stems from a feeling of you, you're fearing losing control. But I believe that at the heart of the entire thing is that feeling of I need to have control. You're expanding and moving away from that mindset and you're understanding how limiting that can be, how, how much how suppressive it actually truly deeply is because then you you start to isolate yourself because as you try to control people the more you do the more you try to control them the more you push them away and so many of you experiences um deep losses during this time and it only created suffering and 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 we're not talking about suffering that was like n- not for very long we're talking about suffering that has stood the test of time you've been stuff suffering for a long time from this chiron is all about that wound that doesn't heal and so it's it's time to change your mindset and it's time to break free and liberate yourself from trying to control other people's mindsets it's very exhausting to have to do that it's very frustrating and to and believe me as truly deeply secure aries would just is fine with people having their own mindset You could just say silent in your head, they're idiots and they're wrong, but whatever. So it's time to change those fear-based rituals. Um, uh, True control is having the faith and the belief that partners love you and are devoted to you. And that you don't have to control and you micromanage them in order for them, 
for them to fit into what you consider love. Um, you have to understand that people express love in all different ways. We all have different love languages. And, and I deeply believe that by appreciating different love languages, you can grow and expand yourself. So this is all about that point where we expand. We break free from our rigid belief system. Um, growth comes from partnerships that encourages each other's, um, each individual um, to grow and expand in with their relationship with their self. So if you're trying to conform them and make them have the relationship that you see that they should have with themselves, then I believe that what you do is suppress and, and, and push them away. You want to break free from these patterns. These patterns are toxic and they no longer serve you. They're not the future. The future is everybody standing up, individually standing out, and really honestly embracing their own little quirky selves. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching in Astrology Corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next Astrological Moment. Hi, Taurus. This is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. Now... This is all about ending karmic cycles in relationships. Venus rules. Um, Venus is your ruler, but it also rules pleasure and relationships, unions, partnerships of all sorts. Um, so your ruler is aligning with the wounded healer. It's very beautiful energy, especially for you. It's time that you change the way that you maintain some of your closest friendships. Um, you have been, you often blurred boundaries between friends and lovers, and you may have lost some amazing friends based on your inability to maintain respectful boundaries. I believe that's how you start out a relationship. You start out, you need a friend as a lover, or you need a, a lover to, to be a friend, first and foremost. I believe a lot of it has to go with security, and it's just, it, it makes sense for you to, to, to do it the slow process way. But I also believe that in that you have lost some very dear people in your life because you blurred those boundaries when you should not have. Um, I believe that um, relationships may have suffered from the amount of pleasure that you receive from these friendships. I believe that you, you know, then see what happens is we we get our needy our immediate needs met, and then but but they would never ever last the test of time. They they were they never had that long term. Um, feel to these relationships but it's just you're you're such a pleasure seeker that I think you just went along with the pleasure I think you're now starting to understand the consequences of doing stuff like that your relationships I think are going to be refined in this energy I believe what's going to happen is you're going to be taking a look at your friends you're going to start setting boundaries you're going to start to fear losing people because relationships are very, very, very um, cathargic. They're very good for us. Um, so it's time to develop a friendship with a partner that transforms the way you commit to intimate partnerships. I also see sometimes that with Tauruses, they'll blur, they'll have a lot. It's not that they have friends with benefits. It's that they don't want you, I don't know, you take your time in relationships so you can, you can get straight to the pleasure and you then you may not know if you want that partner yet, but you're getting to the pleasure because that's the way you roll. Um, I deeply believe that that's where your relationships go wrong. So what you need to understand is that, yes, you are an excessive pleasure seeker, but what are the consequences of doing that? Who could you possibly lose that you don't want to lose at this point? Um, so friends can and will turn into lovers for you, but you need to stop the ritual of falling in love for the sake of falling in love. Um, and you, you need to stop discarding a person once you no longer feel completely, uh, pleasurably satisfied with them. So what you need to develop is the view that, that relationships need to have an element of security to be associated with this the feeling that you then devote yourself to the pleasure seeking so i believe what is being expanded for you is just the realization that your the intimacy level that you're trying to expand is a form of commitment is a that it has a duration to it so i believe that you may be caught in a relationship right now where you made a friend a lover 
and you don't know how to get out of that cycle. Or some of you may be caught in a friends with benefit types relationships, but you know that they never, they don't have that, they don't stand the test of time. You're starting to see the cycle of that doesn't work for me anymore. I'm really looking for this type of relationship. You're really growing. I think, I think a lot in this energy. I really think that your mindset is, is expanding. And I really believe what you're starting to do is understand um, exactly what you want from a relationship and to and that this is the realization that many of you are, are caught in is what do you want right now from the current relationships you're in and there, there really honestly needs to be those what it needs to do is you need to start involving you need to start to take a risk you need you need to take that risk you need to divulge your feelings you need to become very very real about your romantic intentions or lack thereof um but the risk is that you can maintain the relationship instead of lose the relationship inevitably because of the the, the elephant that you're avoiding in the room anyhow guys thank you so much for watching in at astrology corner and i look forward to talking to you guys again on the next astrology energetic reading for Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. So for you, this is about ending karmic cycles, this journey that we've been on with, with um, Chiron uh, aligning with Venus. It's kind of taken its time with each planet. And so what I think this is, is that, you know, Venus rules pleasure and relationships and unions and money. And I think for you, what this is expanding at this point is that you need to grow and move forward um, in relationships. So um, there is a relationship or a friendship that may have stood the test of time that I think that you deeply value at this point, And that has always made you feel accepted and loved. I think that what this boils down to is this person sees you for who you deeply, authentically are. Sharing your ideas with this person is not something that you're scared of doing because they seem to embrace the human being that you are. Um, I believe this person could really help you change the way that you commit to um, partnering mentally. I believe what it is is that um, you're kind of a creature that likes to pleasure seek you you definitely are kind of a more whimsical person so if the mood's right you kind of just you know you deeply go with it but I definitely believe that that is where some of your relationships go wrong and you 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 often start to experience the instability that people associate with you with people really associate Gemini's with cheaters I mean they really do they really think that they're just liars they just say what they got to say to get what they want um I don't believe that's the way it is. I believe that you're genuine at the time that you're feeling all the feelings that you're feeling, but that you're not in tune with longevity. I believe that that's where your relationships are going to start to transform and turn around. Before that, you're going to go through some opposition in order to understand that. Because anytime that we have to change something, we have to go through a certain amount of pain to be associated with it. So the realization is, at this point, is that your relationships that you seek and want and desire, yes, they need to come, they're, they're easy relationships, the flow of energy is very wonderful, they seem to understand you on a very authentic level, they're actually supporting the direction that your life is going. But day to day, you need to really evaluate whether or not this person can be part of a day to day ritual, part of your daily life. Um, I believe that if you see them being part of your daily life, um, they, they create stability for you. They teach you stability that that solid relationship that can show you the way then I believe that it's definitely an energy that you need to start taking a look at. So for some of you, you are moving away from a learned behavior that's destroyed the way uh, that you viewed your career life path destiny. So for some of you, I think some of you have just been bouncing around endlessly with no, with no direction, no point to your energy. You're just all over the place. I mean, you're very, very whimsical. Um, I believe that there is somebody in your life that stabilizes this energy greatly but understands the whimsical nature and allows you to be you, but also is grounding you in a very unusual way that I think is, I think it's both unsettling. I think it's scary. There's a level of commitment that you're starting to see on the horizon and it's very 
I don't know. That can be a little uh, earth shattering as well. Um, I do believe that perhaps for some of you, a father figure or a nurturer in your life made you fear the consequence of settling down. So perhaps you guys were involved in relationships where um, there was some instability in your in your home environment. So I think for, for you settling down, you can associate with that repetitive pattern of that can happen to me and I don't I don't want to lose my options because, you know, I don't want to settle for that lifestyle. Um, so a partner in your life may be helping you realize that you are a unique individual that has a lot to give and is allowing you to have the freedom to explore your options. I don't think this person is trying to suffocate you and hold you down and, and make you feel a certain way. I think this energy to me, it feels like the karmic cycle is ended and you're in a whole new world. And you're discovering the way the relationship, not only that you have with yourself, you're finding your individuality, but I think that you're also finding the finding out that commitment doesn't have to be associated with a certain amount of pain or um, displeasure, but that there's pleasure that can be associated with relationships that stand the test of time. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching this astrology corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next one. with Annette's Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. Now for you, uh, I am talking about ending a karmic cycle because, you know, um, the Chiron, the wounded healer, we've been kind of resolving some of these karmic issues in our lives. Uh, Venus does rule pleasure in relationships, and when I felt this energy, I felt like you're hesitating to let go of the past. I, I you know, God, you know, it's so difficult for a Cancer to let go of the past because that can make them vulnerable to some some pain in the future and i definitely believe that where you're expanding expanding the most where the the wound is healing where the karmic cycle is ending is the fact that expansion does i i, I believe that for you i think it's a fear of loss i think there's a fear of if i let go um you know it may that person may expand without me or I may expand without them. So there's just that feeling of letting go, just loosening your claws is your problem right now. Um, I feel the walls you have constructed were built in pain, but they are no longer necessary. This is a time of revelation, of healing, moving away from karmic cycles. But if you're holding on to the past and all you're doing is reliving them over and over again, you are not healing from them. Um, I believe that the walls um, block the ability to experience um, suffering again, true that, but it also uh, confines you in them. So some of you are reliving what you're trying to protect yourself from because you you blocked all that pain in right along with you. Um, so you are on a journey taking down these walls that will open you up to the experience more pleasure. This is about pleasure. Life is about pleasure, not about pain. And it's not about protecting yourself from pain. It's about experiencing pleasure in the end. And the, the pleasure of having a positive ego. So for some of you, life-work balance will allow you the free time to explore your options. This is about balance, of course. Um, committing to a healthy routine will restore your confidence and increase your stamina. Um, also will increase the way that you feel about yourself. It's time to add more pleasure. Stop working so hard on every little detail. You can get lost in the details because what you're trying to do is to avoid anything that doesn't feel good. But believe me when I say the details take care of themselves. We're in reflective energy. If we miss a detail, believe me, it comes back up again and it lets us know it's there. Um, have the belief that you are being divinely guided and that the path that you are on will expand your potential eventually. Stop thinking so immediate. I know that there's a lot of energy in Uranus and Uranus is asking us for immediate results right now, but that is not wise. That's not, that's not submitting. That's not get, that's not fully embracing your belief system that everything is going to be fine no matter what. You are in fear when you're when you're resisting anything that's progressive. Allow yourself to feel pleasure daily. Make it a point that every day that you get to experience something pleasurable, that it is not task oriented, that you're not nurturing everybody, that you're not uh, that you're not trying to find some way to heal others. This is not about 
others. This is about really embracing your identity. Others reflect what we feel about ourselves. So where we're deficient with ourselves is what we're going to attract. Or at least we're going to attract the life lesson to face that. So I see it's, it's no purpose to hold on to something that does not serve you. And in the end, we're trying to heal. We're trying to embrace this new healing energy. So it's a beautiful energy. Um, you know, the ruler at this time, your ruler at this time um, is in very expansive energy, but it's an energy that's asking us to, on a day-to-day, -day, embrace new concepts, embrace a new way of thinking. But it is squaring off with the Venus and Chiron. So I believe that you're resisting expansion. You're resisting it's like you can't let go of your routines because your routines, you've held on to them for so long. They provided you with so much security. And now you just don't want to let go of those regimented routines. And I believe that they were a prison, a wall. They, they You're avoiding something by holding on to that, uh, that strict routine. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching it at Astrology Corner. And I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next Astrological. Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. Now for you, this, okay, for everybody, this is about ending karmic cycles. You know, Venus rules pleasure and relationships. It rules money as well. Beauty, all that good stuff. Um, it, I believe that you are deeply aligned with what your heart desires and uh, at a very, very ego-based level, this is beautiful energy. I really believe that you are doing well with energy right now. I think the future is, um, what you are fixating on. I believe that you're fixating on the right things and taking risks and calculated risks, slowing it down. You're not, you're not so foolhardy in this energy. I believe that your ego is based on taking those slow, but sure, having a slow, but sure results um, to it. I believe that your journey that is before you is filling you with a great deal of hope. You are on the right um path right now and um i believe that you feel that you have learned a lot of lessons and that you're really taking those to heart when you're moving forward um i think that you feel a great deal of ease now that your journey has begun i think that you fought it for a little bit everybody goes to this this point where we kind of resist our journey and we re resist that need to you know, go on and go um, embrace a new karmic cycle. I believe that there's going to be a lot of growth and expansion once you do this. Um, I think that, uh, I think that it is time that you believe that the ending that you're envisioning it could be very much your eventual reality. Um, I believe that what you want right now is recognition and that's what you deeply desire. I believe that your belief systems are very, very strong and that you are very, very hopeful about this change that you're making. I believe that there's a lot of personal growth and expansion that is only going to create more opportunity as you embrace the really positive energy of this. And I really honestly believe like the time is now. Now you say um, that we do have some planets in retrograde and we are um, in April, we're starting to fall, more planets are starting to fall into retrograde. And so many people believe that Making changes during those times is not recommended. I actually don't. I believe it's a great time to work on the details. I believe it's a great time to reflect and to make sure that that risk, that calculated risk that you want to take, that you've really refined. And this energy is going to be refining that choice. It's really going to be pulling out what we don't see. And I really believe it's kind of like when we're reviewing a legal contract. And we hire that lawyer that says, hey, you need to read that small, fine print. Um, I believe that the universe is providing us with a fine print in this energy. So I believe it's very positive. For some of you that I believe that are caught in some sort of ego-based, I, I believe that some of you may be caught in routines that are no longer serving expansion. So I believe that the negative form of this energy is the realization that the the, the direction that we thought we had to go, we probably have to change because it's not going to provide the stability that we were initially hoping for. That is the point where we start to work through those details, refine those details. It's a beautiful energy for you, Venus, and is um, really asking you to make some big changes. And, you know, this is about 
making a change based on pleasure or a pleasurable result, which is our most favorite type of change to fixate on versus, you know, change that has to do with moving away from pain. I just want you, I just want you to be very mindful of the fact that what you're trying to do is create long-term security and don't hold on to routines that only provide you with immediate results. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching Annette's Astrology Corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next Astrological Event. Hi, Virgo, this is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. Now for you, uh, Venus rules relationships and pleasure, and... Um, money and many Virgo, Virgos are selflessly sacrificing emo emotional and physical support to stay in dead end relationship. Oh, this is it's so hard because you're such a selfless creature and I believe that you love the duty and the routine and the rituals and I believe that what ends up happening with people like that is they stay in relationships that are dead end relationships because they believe that if they just follow through and keep trudging through the details, then eventually they're going to get that end result, that goal that they're so fixated on. But, you know, the realization is that might be, uh, you might be actually generating that type of relationship based on an insecurity that you have with yourself. Um, relationships are perfect mirrors for ourselves. For you, I definitely believe this has more to do with partnerships in your life relationships where I'm talking about where there is some longevity to them these for some of these these could be established relationships where you have been caught in this ritual and this routine of serving them but not getting your needs met so I deeply believe what you need to do is evaluate your relationship this time and understand that you're at the ending of a karmic cycle so if some of you experience endings or some of you experience ending you know recently I believe that's breaking you free from something that you probably couldn't break free from yourself. Um, more importantly, what I believe that this has to do with is if you're looking at relationships and they're dysfunctional or you're not getting what you want or you're not getting the types of partners that you want, then you really honestly need to take a look in the mirror and figure out what type of a relationship you have with yourself. What is not in wh what about yourself do you uh, need met by other people and then what you need to understand is why you're not meeting your own need I believe that for you this I believe that when we're talking about Chiron being in um, merging with Venus we're talking about the love that we have for self self-love self-soothing self pleasure providing ourselves with pleasure so I definitely believe that if some of us have been caught in cycles where we seem to just never have a, a significant relationship then I definitely believe that we got to start pointing the finger back at us and saying okay what am I doing wrong here I need to be honest with myself I need to critically analyze myself take a look at everything I'm not talking about this is about healing this is about the revelation things that we can make a difference in ourselves so let's say if some of us are overweight well maybe we need to make a commitment to work out maybe some of us we have emotional swings and we're we're in, we're hypercritical in relationships maybe we need to not do that anymore so I believe that 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 is the cycle that we're definitely on I believe that um falling in love with the People that are projects are a thing of the past for you. I believe that that's not a cycle that you're going to continue on. Um, I believe that some of you may be facing the need to develop a love for yourself before you can love somebody else. I already said that. Um, if you don't like something about yourself, change it so that others can see what you see. I believe that sometimes what is so frustrating in relationships is that they don't see what we see. Or they don't see all the little effort that we put into it. They don't see all the hard work and it's just so frustrating because you're seeing as dedication and they're just seeing it as details they would never even see anyway so uh, stop attending so much to the details too and start attending to the big picture um where you where you refuse to take a risk um to help you stand out and gain recognition we well, got to evaluate why you're doing that why you try to blend in so much why you don't want to stand out why you why you always have to be working in the background or somebody's background um, you know, this is about individuating yourself. You are getting a realization in your personal identity. A lot of stuff is expanding. Um, your relationship with yourself is either expanding or it is falling apart at this point. Um, I think that for you, some of you may experience a health 
crisis that you need to take care of so that you can live a long and healthy life. This is about being selfish, nurturing the self. Um, I believe it's about making time for and stop being so dutiful and making time for doctor's appointments and, and working out and eating healthy. I mean, those, that, that's all that stuff, that attention to the details that I think is expanding you in a positive way. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching Annette's Astrology Corner. And I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next Astrological Event. Hi, Libra. This is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner. And this is your energetic reading for Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. Now for you. Um... I believe that, okay, first of all, this is your ruler. And so that always means a little bit of extra divine healing for somebody whose um, ruler is being aspected by this beautiful, um, beautiful mass. Um, I believe that serving others is something you used to be compelled to do and kind of still are at this point. I think selfless, selfless acts of kindness please you. You don't do anything really that doesn't please you, but I do deep, deeply believe that you connect with pleasing others. I think that you deeply desire the affirmation once you have done this selfless act. I believe that there's a, there's a sense that it kind of tallies up the way that they feel about you. So there's that, even if you don't get the external affirmation, you'll still get that feeling of like, well, they really value that. Um, I think fixing everything and attending to the details that others refused to, to deal with um, have left you feeling very unappreciated in this energy. And I believe that some of you are vocalizing that at this point. I believe that there's, there's a change in your mindset. It's a value that you're placing on your time and your dedication to things. And I believe that you're just starting to get to the point to where you're moving away from those routines and rituals, but you deeply deserve um, something better than that. So except excessive ple people pleasing is no longer fulfilling you at all. I think there's the realization is that, um, you know, it doesn't make you feel valued, but more importantly, I don't think you feel heard. I don't think that it, it reinforces what the way that you see things, <clears throat> which I think is a big deal for you because you're all about, you know, you can selflessly give, but the balance would be then please me afterwards. And I believe that you understand that pretty much better than anybody. I think that you are uh, speaking up about past rituals and routines that no longer provide you with satisfaction. You're not scared in this energy. This is you're vocalizing what you need because, you know, you're done with the suffering cycle. And this is the ending of those karmic cycles. Um, silently suffering while others take advantage of your kindness will no longer be tolerated in this energy. You will definitely be speaking your mind. It will be very blunt and harsh and directional and to the point you will not mess around in this energy. And it's time to equal out the scales at work and at home. So this isn't about you doing living to the extremes so that you can keep partnerships. This is about to me, it feels like there's a sense that you get to get what you want now. For many of you that are in relationships that don't provide you any sort of pleasure, then I believe that you're done. I believe that the ending of the karmic cycles is either we find a way to agree and communicate effectively and we move forward in a way that expands both of our potential or I'm going to have to disassociate myself from this relationship because it no longer serves my pleasure sector. It no, It's providing me way more pain than it is pleasure. And that's not a place you stay in at all long because you can pretty much replace anybody if you really want to. So um, I believe for you that this is a karmic cycle that you've been on sometime. I believe that this is a ritual at this point. And I believe that when we start to move away from this ritual, I believe it's just creating those routines at first that then generate the ritual afterwards. But I believe for some of us, we're just having that hard time of creating that ritual. It's like we have to set up the routine before the ritual. And I believe that communicating about that is going to be very, very difficult. I think initially when we first start this out, because there's, I believe that you have developed a sense of authority in your family. And I believe that you're starting to take on more of the masculine energy than just complete feminine, submissive, 
telling people what they want to hear, manipulating them to get to believe. I believe that you're actually developing that that cardinal energy that puts you in the forefront and you delegate a little bit more. You're starting to feel more secure with the delegating. Um, it's a beautiful energy for you. I believe the more that you embrace the, the cycle of taking the authority, I think when, as it starts at home, I think you start to, it starts to branch out and go out into all of your relationships. It creates the routine that eventually turns into the ritual, which I believe is going to be healthy and it's going to move you away from these karmic cycles. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching in Astrology Corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next Astrology Corner. Hey, Scorpios, this is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. Now, um, with Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces, um, I believe that this is going to be ending some karmic cycles that you have been on with regarding relationships. And remember, relationships do not have to mean just your relationships. They're unions, partnerships, uh, any relationship that you spend a significant amount of time nurturing and attending to, I believe, is, is falls into this category as well. I believe that if you are in tune with Pluto, I believe that Venus rules pleasure and it rules relationships. So I believe that you are uh, pleasure seeking is going to be high on your list if you're associating with oh, Pluto. I feel like you feel like it's time that it's a time in your life where Earth energy is making you very patient and diligent. Um, I think that you are very intuitively aligned and that you are that you are filled with hope and a great deal of pleasure out of setting up a daily routine that firms up your commitment and passion for a direction in your life that is starting to go in the right direction. I believe for some of you, this is you're enthusiastic. I mean, you're overly optimistic. I believe that you're just intuitively, you know, that everything is is really aligning you with stability. And that's because your ruler right now is in this beautiful sextile with this alignment, Pluto. If you're lining up with Mars, which is going to drop into retrograde here pretty quick, um, then what I deeply believe is that you are going to be trying to push forward ego-based in a headstrong manner that will lead to more karmic suffering. You are not done with your karmic cycle. Cycle. So I believe that that is very that's it's very much about ego. It's very much about that immediate want. If you start lining up with with Mars, Mars is going to be is is conjunct with Saturn. And what I believe that starts to put you in is just Saturn's classroom, which is all filled with karma and slowing down and obstacles and resistance um, because you're seeking a resolution in that energy. So what we attract is what we is the is karma karma then teaches us what we don't want so you don't want to do that if your ego is feeling is is feeling like you know um you need to make a commitment to your career life past destiny you will be met with yet another karmic lesson that needs to be learned be mindful of what you value ego versus stability i think stability obviously taking things slow not making it so immediate Right now, it's very difficult not to get caught up in the, that immediate result. I got to have it right now. I need to feel good right now. I, you know, I see this. I got to have it right now. But with all of our planets dropping into retrograde, this is a relaxation session. This is a reflect. This is time of reflection. This is time of, I mean, you have to understand it, it very, very soon. We are going to start to have our planets drop into retrograde. So many of them are at that point, that stationary point where everything is slowing down, where results are not possible. And so for many of you, that could be very frustrating. Then you'll square out and then you'll start to become very, very, very hypercritical and very pessimistic and you'll get depressed and then you'll start to, you know, excessively pleasure seek in a negative way. So I, I we need to stop the karmic cycles. What we really need to attach to in this energy is just long term security, wisdom, peace, patience. And we need to start to create routines that actually associate us with the earth energy and earth energy is slow moving. You know, things on Earth take a slow time to manifest. The Grand Canyon didn't just pop out of the world like it took 
thousands of years to make it happen. So, um, but then it is a true form of beauty, right? It's one of the most beautiful things you can lay your eyes on. You know, or erosion on, you know, a cliff has created something beautiful. These things take time and you need to be patient and stay away from that immediate pleasure seeking because that's where it's going to get you into that karmic cycle again. And we're ending karmic cycles. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching it at the Astrology Corner. And I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next episode. Sagittarius, this is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. So we are ending cycles when we got this kind of alignment. Uh, Venus does rule relationships and pleasure. So um, in this energy, maintaining balance will be the energy that moves you away from unreal expectations. Um, and this is, there's a lot to be very, very hopeful about in this energy. You may have to face the fact that you don't seem to know how to live up to all those expectations. I, 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 here's what I believe. This is a time when you have to be very mindful that the direction that you are going is in a loving and supportive direction of what you value. And for many of you, I believe that many of you are placing value on relationships both new and established your actual family with your family. Many of you are setting up some roots. You're setting down a foundation. You want to, you're starting to balance uh, value stability because Saturn's been in Sagittarius. So it's, it's not this, it's not this overly optimistic that just is overly benefic energy. This is about really honestly, those, day-to-day -day tasks, the mundane world, actually seeking value in that. So I believe with that comes this revelation and energy that sometimes we set unrealistic expectations or sometimes people have unrealistic expectations of us. So it's just that time in relationships. We're really starting to, like what, if you're attracting a lot of unreal expectations, well then perhaps I think you may have set up unrealistic expectations of yourself. I believe that if you are in relationships that are starting to flourish and that you're starting to get that fearful feeling, well, then maybe you need to wonder why that you're so fearful of, of commitment or committing or firmly planting, um, you know, that seed in the ground and, and starting that, that firm foundation. I mean, I believe that many of you are just facing those reality checks, that that's where you are at in your life. And it's very, it's a different mindset than what you're used to. So it's just merging that, the relationship that you have with yourself and the expectation and the way that you're perceived with what you deeply want. Like, I just believe externally and internally, you're just getting those two to match. So moving forward, um, you value what, have, what you have worked for and and it, it took a lot of work to attain what you have and I don't think you want to fall back into poor coping methods I believe that many of you are a forward energy you're enlightened you understand what's going on right now um, I believe that Saturn will teach you how to control your impulses to wander away from challenging relationship issues many of you when it got hard you you bolted it just wasn't worth it but I believe that there's something special about this time period in your life or I don't believe you value that anymore. I believe that you have learned to be steady and reliable and intend to the mundane details of with home and family. I believe that if some of you haven't, you soon will. This is the part, this is the karmic cycle that's going to end. And I believe that balance has been a key component that has been missing for quite some time. And now you are going to move away from that karmic cycle. You know, excessive pleasure seeking used to be a really big problem for you. And I, I don't believe that because we have the North node in Virgo, I don't believe it's about that excessive pleasure seeking at all costs and consequence to hell with it. I believe that now the consequences have been shown to you. You understand them. You're elevated. You understand what you want now. So I believe that you're very considerate and compassionate in this energy. So you're willing to actually make these changes to be accommodating, which is, I don't think it's a first for you, but I don't believe that you, that you wanted to sacrifice as much as you 
that you currently do to get what you want to create the stability to create those foundations anymore. I mean, I believe that this is a this is a realization moment for you. I believe it's a big growing up period for you. I believe that you know, I believe that you see the wisdom in being patient and providing uh, being reliable and stable because that's what Saturn's been trying to reinforce. Um it's a beautiful time period for you. Even though you're ruler at this time, which is um, conjunct with Mars, you're definitely working a lot mentally on this project. Um, this is something that you may not be letting everybody in on. It's something that you're deciphering kind of behind the scenes because um, this is a this is a, a a point of internal growth for you. Um, I also believe what this need this means is because Venus and Chiron are squaring off with your ruler, which is conjunct with Mars. Mars is going to drop into retrograde. I believe that honestly, you're reassessing, realigning, you're redirecting your thoughts. You you are slowing down. There, you are thinking about things, and it needs. It's a selfish period for you because I d deeply believe that the best relationship that you can have is with yourself. And I believe that if there's a point of contention. Then I think that you it then you just you deserve to nurture the relationship with yourself because that's the that's what gives stability to your entire immediate environment. So anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Astrology Corner, and I look forward to you guys again on the next Astrology Moment. Hi, Capricorn. This is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. Now for you. Um, Venus rules pleasure, it rules money, it rules relationships, unions of any sort that could be business, that could be anybody that you spend a significant uh, amount of time with. At this time, what this is doing is when Chiron's involved, it's about it's about acknowledging a wound and kind of ending the suffering and the pain that's associated with the wound and moving on. And because Venus is involved and it's in Pisces and it's at the end of the zodiac, so it's at its end of the karmic cycle, I believe what many of you are facing is like an awakening period. It's like a it's like a point of revelation where you determine what you want out of pleasure, what you want out of relationships. But more importantly, I think this has a lot to do with the fact that you are in a state of reflection. Um, your ruler is in retrograde. It's going to be, con it, it's conjunct with Mars and Mars is going to go into retrograde here. And so all of this is going to be releasing us from the past, moving toward pleasure, moving away from suffering. Um, what I believe that this is a realization, uh, the awakening period is the realization. And so for some of you, what it could be is that the realization is initially difficult to process. Um, I believe that's why we, at the point of when there's this alignment, um, Saturn and Sagittarius is going to be conjunct with Mars, but it is going to be squaring off with Venus and squaring off with Chiron. And, and remember, they're aligned. So to me, what this suggests is that we're at the point that where we're acknowledging the fact that we have a wound that just, you know, simply can't heal. And we're at the realization of um, acknowledging the fact that there's going to be a weakness there. There's going to be a point where we're always going to be, I, I think it's always going to be a tender point in your life. The realization is, is that you don't take that kind of stuff lying down. You're the type of personality that likes to initiate action and move forward. And you do it, you know, with, with this dramatic flair. So it, you're just not the type of person that processes limitation very, very easily. And so, and I believe this is going to be the struggle for quite some time for you. So what I do believe is it's the way you think and the way that you view your future is starting to change. And I, I believe that for some of you, what's, what's, what's changing is the fact of how you interpret everything. You know, where it all stems from. What, you know, has made you who you are. I mean, some of those, sometimes when we go through these realizations, they're very, it's very stark to, to admit to ourselves. So. Um, a stark reality may have you face the way that you identify and value family in its most primal level. So I believe what you're doing is weighing out the way that you view family, 
versus the way that you were programmed to view a family environment. So I believe at some point for many of you, there was some form of dysfunction. I believe that you carried that into a karmic cycle um, that you're continuing to battle. What this is, is to overcome programming, um, overcome that point where we do not release ourselves from the fact that what happened in the past is in the past. It doesn't define us. It doesn't define our thoughts. But releasing that, I think at first what you initially have to do is really, truly, deeply acknowledge the vulnerability that you have in this particular area. So um, you are moving away from the past, but it has left some scars. And I don't know if any anybody, anybody has had a really major scar. I have one. I had a big car accident, and so I had um, my lung punctured. And so when the weather gets really cold, this happens many, many years ago. The scar is healed. It, it pretty much is fine. But when the weather gets cold, it aches. And I can always tell when the pressure is going to change or weather is going to dramatically change because my, my ribs, in between my ribs, ache. And so there's always going to be be this initial I don't want to say it's like you're suffering and there's going to be an ache that you can't ever get rid of but I just think it's the point there's that constant reminder of that the fact that you deserve more than initially you started out with in life so I think what this has to do with is you're tending to those wounds um, and you're processing a loss or a disappointment that may have seemed like this may seem like an overwhelming task. I mean, I think for some of you, the realization is I can't believe I'm going through this. I think for some of you, the realization is I can't believe that I have this weakness that I'm always going to be dealing with. Uh, for some of you, this is I'm ending. I, I, I need this for me right now. I created a family based on a deficiency I deserve more than that because this family doesn't make me initially happy anymore. I need to move toward a, toward a mindset, toward a family, toward an environment that I think best reflects the way that I view the future. For many of you, when we have um, cycles that end, it ends mindsets, and along with that comes a lot of endings. And so, uh, again, ending a karmic cycle means that we're also ending karmic relationships. So for some of you, this could be a dramatic change in the way in a relationship. You could be ending a relationship. You could be uh, advancing a relationship and saying, you know, I'm no longer fearful of commitment. The past no longer has the hold on me. My my past no longer defines me. Uh, you know, I know that I had dysfunction in my environment, but I am ready to commit wholeheartedly and 110 percent. Some of you, it's acknowledging that you suffer, that you're fearful of losing, of loss. You found a family. You don't want to lose it. So you may be over emphasizing your feelings at this point because there's some vulnerability that I don't think you're dealing with altogether well. So it's as though you're processing the details that led up to the realization and um, that true growth will begin when you start to walk away. So as we start to process this and we start to have this realization and we go through this period of time where I deeply believe it's just that point of I deserve more, but what I what I think more importantly it has to do with is changing your mindset, changing the way that you view it, what kind of result do you want from it? You know, um, I believe that what we can slip into easily is a need to control our environment and a need to control it, prevent it from expanding, prevent it from going too far away, prevent. There's a, there's a need to keep it contained. I don't think that's in the highest mindset or the form of vibration. I believe that's when many of you will start slipping into this square and start slipping into the lower vibration of this energy. Um, I believe that if you start to embrace individuality in relationships, if you start to if you start to accept others individually, externally, then they can start to accept you for who you are. I believe that's when we start to generate and recreate a cycle of growth and independence, freedom, expression. That's when you flourish in energy. That's when relationships will start to flourish as you get out of this tragic little karmic cycle that maybe doesn't feel altogether yummy. 
Um, I believe that what caused you to suffer from your in your childhood is not necessarily what you're going to take forward. It is something that you need to acknowledge. It's something that you need to be aware of because it does help us understand why we act the way we do on some sort of unconscious level. I notice that every Capricorn that I've ever known, they act out. They don't really, uh, really say what they feel, but they act out in these really strange kind of ways before you start to figure out that, oh my gosh, it really has to do with this. And then, and then once the tea kettle blows, once you've stuffed enough and you've had all these weird actions, then all of a sudden, um, that's when we get down to the heart of it in some very big blowout scene. And so when you fall into negative vibrations, you're going to have to find a different way. Now, perhaps that was part of the programming that you need to restructure, regenerate, refine. Um, as all of these planets start to drop into retrograde, um, I do want to emphasize that Pluto is going to be dropping into retrograde. I believe that's when we start to reflect on how we view security stability, how we view structure, order. I believe that we get a better perspective when we reflect and we take a look at everything as a whole as, as the entire outcome. And again, this is all creating the end of the cycle. The more that we acknowledge the realization, the more that we stop suppressing the lesson and that we allow the healing of Chiron into our lives, the more that you can move past this. Guys, it's a beautiful energy. Um, I know that you guys have been doing a lot of 12th house work and this can be a little brutal because a lot of this stuff I think you suppress and hold back and you, I don't know, I don't, it's like you don't want anybody to know that you're suffering. But I believe that some of your closest relationships really offer a key, um, they really are going to be the things that heal you and take you away from this because I deeply believe that as we acknowledge who we are, we individuate ourselves from we're individuating ourselves from everything, from programming, from everything. So you're not stuck. In fact, it's just a beginning. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching Annette's Astrology Corner. And I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next Astrological Event. Hi, Aquarius. This is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner. And this is your energetic reading for Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. Now... Venus rules relationships and pleasure, and in my humble opinion, you have reached a very critical moment when I think um, that, that denial is just not an option anymore for you. I mean, there's the, the realism is this is my situation. Um, this goes back to a time that shaped and molded you and your basic character. So this goes back to when you were very young, I believe, for many of you. I feel that you've associated pain with maintaining relationships. So many of you have a very disconnected approach to relationships. Many of you are stuck in that state of silently suffering. You're in a pause mode um, because I believe that there's something that is very, very painful to acknowledge. It definitely has to do with a relationship if, if you've got Chiron in here conjuncting um, Venus. So this may have had to do with a father figure or an authority figure in your life, a sibling. <clears throat> it may even have to do with a mindset that you don't deserve a relationship that has everlasting potential. I believe some of you may have had that feeling of like, this is just too much work. I give up. But I believe that that just makes you go around on that stupid wheel on that hamster wheel because eventually you're going to get to the point where something sparkles and 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 it puts you back into that karmic cycle but we're ending karmic cycles so this is that state of realization of course it is um the reason i say that this is a state of realization is because saturn your ruler is conjunct with mars and conjunct with the moon during this event and it's squaring off with venus and chiron this alignment so what this definitely means to me is that there's just, there's something that we, when we're aligning with what we value, we really are taking a look. Now, I believe for many of you guys, this is relationships with siblings, you know, something that has been going on for quite some time, um, a, a relationship that needs to heal there. I believe for some of you, <clears throat> I believe it's mindsets. I believe it's regimented mindsets. I believe that the best way for us to evaluate 
the relationship that we have with ourselves is to evaluate the relationships that we have with our friends right now. If some of you are in conflict with your friends, some of your deepest friends, some of your closest friends, some of your long-term friends, um, then I deeply believe that that's a reflection of what the relationship that we have with ourselves. We're in turmoil with ourselves somewhere. I also deeply believe that, um, you know, this is expanding your growth and potential. And sometimes when you get stuck in mindsets and you get regimented, it's like you want to block yourself. You want to create that wall so you'll never suffer again, but you lock suffering in. So right now the energy is tearing down those walls. And the realism is, is that is that energy is flooding into you, causing you to have a realization about these wounds that you have endured. Um, and that the value that you place on yourself and that the changes that need to be made and that the mindset is it, definitely something that you need to really expand. So your rigid thinking is refusing to let go of ego based desires. Um, you want someone to value you in the same way you valued them, perhaps. Perhaps some of you are stuck in that cycle. Um, I feel that you are starving and that you need some well-deserved attention. If you're sitting in energy right now and you're starving, you just feel like you just, you're starving for affection, starving for love, starving to be understood, starving, 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 conflict. I believe you're starving with your relationship with yourself. Because inevitably, that is the relationship that we nurture our entire life. It's what karmic cycles are all about, is that relationship we have with ourselves. Some of us have been programmed from a very young age not to have a good relationship with ourselves, not to value ourselves, not to place the bar high enough for ourselves. So we sit in states of suffering and repeat karmic cycles that we were taught from a very young age. It's time to break free. It's time to end those cycles. It's time to create a new cycle for yourself. And that is what I believe that this energy is deeply all about. I believe that some of you are lost in the dark right now of your ego. I believe it's just pure, basic, immediate ego for some of you. Um, I believe that your mind is a, is your prison. I believe that you're lost in there. I believe that you're, you, you, you're creating your cycle of suffering. I believe the past is the past, the present's now. You're creating your suffering wherever it is. I believe that um, this energy feels like you have um, compulsions at this point. I think some of you have very, very, very um, an imbalance with obsessiveness. I believe that some of you are unwilling to end this repetitive pattern because I deeply believe that repetitive pattern, no matter how how much it doesn't serve you, it's there's still a state of repetition that that solve that is self-soothing so um i believe that you're holding on to the pain that is no longer good and that it's festering a dark negative energy do i think that you're these terrible dark people no i believe that you've suffered greatly at the hands of others i believe that you've been misunderstood i believe that you have time and time again tried to do the right thing and lead people on the right path and i believe that it's so difficult to face that others didn't follow um, I believe that the realization is that you only you are the only one that has the power to release you from this self-contained prison at this point. You know what? If somebody doesn't want you, somebody doesn't love you, somebody doesn't nurture you, if somebody doesn't understand you or respond to you in the way you do, lose them. <laughs> release them. Release that energy and release yourself from the prison of trying to get affirmation from somebody um, because you're really just trying to affirm yourself. You're really just trying to make sure that you're okay with your own relationship with yourself. The realization is that only you have the power to release yourself from this to the degree that what I'm trying to say is that you need to face the truth that this is this that if you release whatever you're holding on to, obsessively thinking about, um, if you, a ritual that you're doing over and over again that no longer serves you, I believe what this then, this creates is the ability to end that cycle and create a pleasurable response for yourself. Right now, all you're doing is having this, this cycle of pain, 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 and avoiding pain. 
but we're not experiencing enough of the pleasure associated with life. So reliving pain doesn't make pain any less. It just makes it more and more and more and more intense, which then creates obsessive and jealousy and all of these crazy things that can happen with um, Uranian energy that goes askew right now. So broaden your perspective by redirecting your thoughts away from suffering in the direction um, of gaining wisdom. There's wisdom to be attained from that. You know, even if we were in a horribly abusive relationship or a horribly abusive relationship with a parent or authority figure or some sort that helped manifest and conform us, um, I deeply believe that we get to free ourselves from that. We get to liberate our minds. We get to liberate. We are in control of our own destiny. We, we get to break free from the cycles. Nothing can contain us. Nothing can contain an, an, an Aquarius or Uranus, for God's sakes, especially when it's conjunct with the sun. So there is a possibility for this to really, really manifest healing. And that's what I really want you to concentrate on. Acknowledge your wound, be vulnerable, look at it, nurture it, always understand that it's there. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you, it doesn't make anybody look on you any less to let you, you're human. You're just like everybody else trying to walk on this planet, trying to get the most out of life. You're beautiful. And don't let the cycle of suffering continue. Release yourself, free yourself what it's all about. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for uh, Venus and Chiron aligning in Pisces. Now for you, Venus rules relationships and pleasure, so you may feel like a partner does not see you for who you are, and you may have held back something you deeply identify with because you're trying, you're afraid of crit criticism, but more importantly, you're just wanting that affirmation. So I believe that most every Pisces I've ever known excessively pleasure seeks for attention, affirmation from others. Um, there's just this feeling like you're such a selfless creature that I believe that what you do is you you evaluate the way that others see you. So if everybody's pleased with you, then you're pleased with yourself. If everybody's not pleased with you, then you're not pleased with yourself. Uh, if they're critical of you, then you're critical of yourself. Like you allow them to develop the, the relationship that you have with yourself. So I believe many of you one of the cycles that is ending is definitely the, the way that you view criticism from others, from relationships, from, from partnerships in your life. How you allow that to reflect upon your self-image, I think, um, because you're creating a new self at this point. I believe that some of you are suppressing something that you may think a partner may not approve of and maybe and are not, you're not lying about it, but... You're just not discussing it at a time. You're just, you know, you're just acting like it's not there. But I definitely believe that for some of you, there's an elephant in the room that I definitely think it, it's time to start to talk about because you need to identify your true identity to this person. I think the problem is, is that you are people pleasing by doing that, selflessly sacrificing this portion of your identity as, um, and you're, but more importantly, what I think is really sad about this is that you're denying part of your identity with key partnerships in your life. And, and remind you, mind you, I'm not talking about, this definitely has to do with relationships for some of you, significant relationships. But say some of you aren't even in significant relationship. I believe it's the significant relationships in your life. The ones that you have nurtured that have stood the test of times. There's, there are things they don't know about you, things you suppress because you're, you're just, scared of what they see, I guess, in that energy. If you are going to embrace hope, you need to stop seeking acceptance at all costs and accept yourself and others soon will follow. Look, as soon as we start to develop the relationship with ourselves, we start to identify our own, own needs and we start to deeply then start to move forward to pursue what we need. Many, the right people follow. The people that were never, that misunderstood you based on what you represented yourself like, um, those people aren't going to be in your future. And that's okay because you are embracing your identity. You're embracing your unique gifts. You're, stand, you're embracing the fact that you want to, 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 
identify your needs and wants. And others, believe me, once confidence starts getting into the picture and once you start to do this, you will be surprised, even if they're critical now, exactly how they will follow in the future. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching this Astrology Corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on